Uh, reading from the book of Acts, chapter 23, no commentary. Paul looked intently at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have conducted myself with a perfectly clear conscience before the God this day. The high priest Ananias ordered his attendants, attendants to strike his mouth. But Paul said to him, God will strike you. Whitewashed. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Do you not indeed do you indeed sit in judgment upon me according to the law, and yet in violation of the law order me to be struck? The, uh, the attendant said, Would you would you relieve God's priest? Would you revile God's high priest? Paul answered, Brothers, I did not realize he was a high priest, for it is written, You shall you shall not curse the ruler of the people. Uh Paul was aware of the aware that some were Sadducees and some were Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial in, for hope for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and a group became divided. And the group became divided. For the Sadducees say there are no resurrection for angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledged all that all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisees' party stood up and sharply argued, We will f we find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a, suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander afraid that Paul would be torn. The dispute was so serious that the, that the commander, that the commander afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, Ordered his troops to go down and rescue him from their midst and make and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood up by him and said, "Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, you so you must also bear witness in Rome." When the day came, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by oath not to drink or eat until they had killed Paul. They were more than forty who. There were more than forty who formed this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves by a solemn oath to taste nothing until we have killed Paul. You together with the Sanhedrin must now make an official request to the commander to have him bring him down to you, as though you made to, meant to investigate his case more thoroughly. We on our part are prepared to kill him before he arrives. The son of the Paul's sister, however, heard about the ambush, so he went and cleared, he went and entered the compound and reported it to Paul. Paul then called one of the centurions and requested, "Take this young man to the commander. He has something to report to him." So he took him and brought him to the commander and explained. The prisoner Paul called me and asked that I bring this young man to you. He has something to say to you. The commander took him by hand and drew him aside and asked him privately, "What is it to you? What is it that you? Have, what is it you have to report to me? Or what is it that you have to report to me?" He replied, "The Jews have conspired to ask you to bring Paul down to the Sanhedrin tomorrow, as though they meant to inquire him about him more thoroughly. But do not believe them. More than forty of them are waiting, waiting for him." They have bound themselves by an oath not to eat or drink until they have killed him. Now they are ready and only wait for your consent. As the commander dismissed the young man, he directed him, No one, tell no one that you gave me this information. He then, then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get to get two hundred soldiers ready to go to go get two hundred soldiers ready to go to Caesarea by nine o'clock tonight. Along with seventy horsemen and two hundred auxiliaries, provide mounts for Paul to ride and give them give him safe conduct to Felix the governor. Then he wrote a letter with discontent. Claudius Lysias to his Claudius Lysias, Lysias to his excellency the governor of Felix, pleadings. This man seized by the Jew and about to be murdered by them, I rescued after intervening with my troops. The, when I heard, when I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I wanted to learn of the, rex, the reason for their accusations against him. So I brought him down. 
so I brought him down to their Sanhedrin. I discovered that he was accused of matters controversial, of controversial questions of the law, and not to charge with, and not of any charge deserving death or imprisonment. Since it was brought to my attention that there are there will be a plot against the man, I am sending him to you at once, and have him have, and also have notified his accusers to state the case against him to you before you. So the soldiers, according to the old, their orders, took Paul and ex escorted him by night to Antiparathus. Antiparathus. The next day, they returned to the compound, leaving the horsemen to complete the journey with them. When they arrived in Caesarea, they, re they delivered the letter to the governor and presented Paul to him. When he had read it and asked to what province he belonged, he learned that he was from Sicilia. He said, I shall hear your case when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be, then he ordered that he be held in custody in Herod's tribune. Okay, we're on with the chapter 23. Uh, we're on chapter 23. Chapter 24, thank you for spending your evening with us. God bless.